So, hello, good afternoon. This is again Ma'am Anna for your teacher in Science 10. So, this is our lesson for the last quarter of this school year. So, we're going to discuss all about gas law, biomolecules, and of course, chemical reaction. So, first, how do you fill up a hot air balloon? So, familiar po tayo sa hot air balloon, tama po? Yan. Uh, I think in Pampanga, if I'm not mistaken, na meron po silang ganyan. And of course, in other country. So, paano po kaya yan? Yan, yung iba nag-iisip. Siguro yung iba naalala si Mr. Bean. Yan. So, how? So, that is the hot air balloon. So, as you noticed, meron pong fire. Bakit kaya merong fire? Yan. So, in a hot air balloon, it is work on the principle wherein the warm air is less dense than the cooler air. So, yun po yung reason bakit po siya umaangat. Next. Okay, let's think about this. How are the pressure and volume of a gas related? So, paano sila naging related? Paano sila ah, nagkaroon ng, ng connection sa isa't isa? Sabi po dito, if the temperature is constant, as the pressure of a gas increases, the volume decreases. So, ano ibig sabihin niyan? As the pressure decreases, the volume increases. So, meaning to say, they are inversely proportional. Kasi, pag tataas si pressure, bababa si volume. Pag si, bo si volume naman ang tumaas, bababa si pressure. And, we have the person involved in studying this. Ayan po yung kanyang picture. And we have none other than Robert Boyle. He was the first person to study this pressure and volume relationship in a systematic way. According to him, in his law, it states that for a given mass of gas at constant temperature, meaning to say the temperature is constant, hindi po natin papakilaman si temperature, the volume of the gas varies inversely with pressure. So, tulad na sinabi ko po kanina, it is inversely proportional. So, ito po ang kanyang graph. So, as you noticed on his graph, nasa baba si volume in liters. So, usually malalaman natin na ang mga units kapag volume nandyan si liter, si milliliter, ano po. And, in pressure, we have dito sa left part, wherein makikita po natin si PA, which is Pascal. As, aside from Pascal, we also have the units in pressure. We have, uh, of course, Celsius. Uh, uh, sorry, not Celsius, but What do you call this? Um, atmosphere. Yan, usually atmosphere in pressure. Then, in temperature, syempre, nandyan si, si Celsius, si Kelvin, Fahrenheit. Ayun. So, as you notice, tignan po ninyo, ang kanyang volume ay 2.5. Uh, from 0 to 2.5 and from 50 to 250. So, as you notice, yung pressure niya 250 pero ang volume niya nasa 0 0.4 tapos yung volume niya from 2.5 pero ang pressure niya mababa 50 pascal lang so yun po yung ibig sabihin ni Robert Boyle sa kanyang study na pag si volume po tumaas si pressure po ay bababa at pag si pressure ay tumaas si volume ay 
bababa. Ano po? Yun po yung kanyang pag-aaral about his law. The pressure and volume relationship. So, as you noticed, we have here, yan, the formula. So, we have P1 times B1 is equals to P2 times B2. P1 stands for initial pressure and we have final pressure for the P2 and we have initial volume for the V1 and of course V2 is final volume. So meaning to say we're going to have a computation on this gas law. So what if may mawawala sa kanila? Paano magkocompute? Yan, using Boyle's Law. Yan. So, we have a sample problem. A balloon contains 30 liter of helium gas at 103 kilopascal. What is the volume of the helium when the balloon rises to an altitude where the pressure is only 25 kilopascal. Of course, we're going to assume the temperature remains constant. Compute niyan. So, using the Boyle's Law, sabi po sa problem, hahanapin daw po natin si final. Kung mapapansin ninyo, uh, meron po dun sa problem, um, dalawang kilopascal or units for pressure and isa lang kay volume. So, meaning to say, hahanapin natin yung volume. So, let's compute for the unknown. Siyempre, first, let's find out the knowns or yung nandun sa problem. So, we have the initial pressure, 103 kilopascal. We have the initial volume for 30 liters and we have the Final pressure for 25 kilopascal. So, of course, ang nawawala si V2. Ma'am, paano po yun? So, this is to start with Boyle's Law. We have P1, V1 is equals to P2, V2. Rearrange the equation to isolate V2. So, ayan po, rearrange natin. P1, B1 equals to P2, V2. Sabi nga inversely. So, gagawin natin, i-divide po natin sa P2 ang both side. Bakit po sa P2? Kasi po, yung kasama kanina ni, kung mapapansin ninyo sa pinaka-general formula, si V2 ang nawawala, so ititira natin si V2. Dahil si P2 walang kasama, saka natin siya i-divide sa P2 or sa final pressure. So, ang lalabas na formula ay V2 is equals to yun, V1 P1 over P2. So, initial volume times initial pressure divided by final pressure. Ano po? Pwede rin naman ang gawin natin kung sino yung nawawala Shortcut po, takpan po ninyo, tulad yan, takpan nyo si V2 sa general formula, nakikita ninyo walang kasama si P2, gagawin natin dahil wala siyang kasama, ibababa na lang natin po siya. So, P1, B1 over P2. Medyo mas madali po yun. Yan. Let's compute. Siyempre, sa substitute natin. Sabi nga, P1, B1, so 30 liters times 103 kilopascal over 25 kilopascal. Kung mapapansin ninyo, parehas po may kilopascal baba at taas. Siyempre, in mathematics, kapag may parehas na units po, ay ika-cancel out natin. So, let's compute. 30 times 103 kilopascal divided by 25, the answer will be 123.6 liters or in scientific notation, imumove po natin siya. Siyempre, kung mapapansin ninyo, we have 1.24 times 10 to the second power liters. So, that will be the answer.
So, ibig sabihin, yung volume niya ay bumaba. Kuha po. Yung volume niya from 30 liters bumaba sa 124. So, that is... Yan. So, does the result make sense? Meron nga ba? So, sabi po, a decrease in pressure at constant temperature must correspond to a proportional increase in volume. The calculated result agrees with the both kinetic theory and the pressure volume relationship. The units have cancelled correctly. Next, we have another sample problem for the Boyle's Law. A sample of neon gas occupies a volume of 677 ml at 134 kilopascal. What is the pressure of the sample if the volume is decreased to 642 ml? So, let's compute. P1, B1, P2, V2. Ano po ang nawawala? What will be the pressure? So, my pressure nasa una. So, ang nawawala ay P2. So, kung tatakpan natin si P2, si V2 walang kasama, ibababa natin si V2. So, ang magiging computation ay P2 V1 is equals to V1 P1 over V2. Yun. So, uh, let's compute. P2 is equals to 677 ml for the V1 times 134 kilopascal for the P1 divided by... 642 ml for the V2. So, cancel cancel out both units. So, matitira si kilopascal. 677 times 134 kilopascal divided by 642. And the answer is, for our pressure or final pressure, we have 141 kilopascal. So, Next. Yan, what have you noticed? So, parang merong usok, may balloon, pinasok si balloon. When an inflated balloon is dipped into a beaker of liquid nitrogen, the air inside rapidly cools and the balloon shrink. Uh, how are the temperature and volume of gas related? So, paano daw naging related si temperature and volume? Yan. So, another person involved in studying gas law, we have Jack Charles. Silent lang po siya. Jackies, pero Jack po yan, Jack Charles. Wherein, according to him, the volume-temperature relationship in gas was determined by his name, Jack Charles, in his experiment, Chuck Charles trapped a sample of gas in a cylinder with a movable piston in water bath at different temperatures. Chuck Charles found out that different gases decreased their volume by factors in 1 over 273 per degree Celsius of cooling. With the rate of reduction, it will be cooled up to negative 273 degrees Celsius and it will have zero volume. Inter How interesting it is, sabi nga niya. Then, according to his law, it states that the constant pressure, or constant and pressure dito, the volume of fixed amount of gas is directly proportional to the Kelvin in temperature. So, dito po, kung mapapansin natin, 273 degrees Celsius, negative po siya. Negative. Pero, ang gagamitin po natin in temperature, we have the constant temperature in Kelvin, we have 273.15. So, sabi na natin, 273 Kelvin, yun po ang gagamitin natin. So, meaning to say, in this law, pag may nakita tayo in his problem na naka in degree Celsius, we're going to add 273 Kelvin. Kasi, kailangan po si Kelvin yung gagamitin natin. 
Ano po, ulitin ko po ha, i-add natin si 273 Kelvin. So, as you notice, dito po sa kanyang graph, we have the temperature sa baba and volume dito po sa kabilang side. So, kapag tumaas po si temperature, tataas din po si volume. Pag tumaas si volume, syempre tataas din si temperature, meaning to say, directly proportional sa sila. Pag tumaas yung isa, tataas din yung isa. Kuha po. Kung kanina si Robert Boyle, inversely, yung isa tataas, yung isa bababa, dito parehas po silang tataas. We have a sample problem. A hot air balloon contains a propane burner on board to heat the air inside the balloon. What happens to the volume of balloon as the air is heated? So, yan po ulit. According to his law, Jack Charles, as the temperature of the air increases, of course, the volume of balloon and ayun, a balloon, in, a balloon inflated in a room at 24 degrees Celsius has a volume of 4 liters. The balloon is then heated to a temperature of 58 degrees Celsius. What is the new volume if the pressure remains constant? So, let's use the P1 over T1 is equals to V2 over T2. Ang nawawala dito, kung titingnan natin si problem, is that what is the new volume? So, meaning to say, final volume ang hinahanap natin. New volume po, ano? So, final. So, V2. Kung mapapansin ninyo, um, V1 over T1, V2 over T2, ang nawawala po ay si, takpan po ulit natin, nawawala si V2. So, ibig sabihin, ang magiging formula natin ay V1, we're going to cross multiply it para makita natin. Ano po? Yan, tingnan natin dito. So, V1, 4 liters, T1, 24 degrees Celsius, T2, 58 degrees Celsius. And for the unknown, nawawala si V2. Ayun po. Because you will use the gas law, start expressing the temperature in Kelvin. So, tulad ng sinabi ko po kanina, kapag naka-degree Celsius po siya, we're going to add 273 para po maging Kelvin siya. Okay, so we have this. T1, 24 degree Celsius plus 273 is equals to 297 Kelvin. And we have T2 is equals to 58 degree Celsius plus 273 is equals to 331 Kelvin. So, ayan po ang general formula. V1 over T1 is equals to V2 over T2. So, takpan po natin si V2. Kung mapapansin ninyo, let's cross multiply. So, V1, ang magiging kasama niya ay si T2. So, meaning to say, equals natin V2 ang nawawala. So, multiply V1 times T2 divided by T1. So, that will be the formula. Ulitin ko po ha, ang magiging formula natin ay V1 T2 is equals to uh, divided by T1. Ayun. Ulitin po natin ha, para makuha po, takpan po yung nawawala. Tapos, pag tinakpan natin yung nawawala, sa general formula tayo magbe-base lagi, pag tinakpan natin yung nawawala, cross-multiply natin, so, V1 T2 divided by T1. So, ganun po ka, simple ang pagkuha ng formula sa mga nawawala. Yan. So, let's compute. So, V2 is equals to 4 liters times 331 Kelvin. As you notice, napalitan na natin si Celsius ng Kelvin. Then, divided by 297 Kelvin. 
So, both units cancel out natin. So, 4 liters times 331 divided by 297. And the answer will be 4.46 liters. Another problem, what is the temperature of a 2.3 liter balloon if it shrinks to a volume of 0 0.2? 632 liters when it is deep into liquid nitrogen at a temperature of 77 Kelvin. So, ang tanong po dyan is temperature. Nasa unahan ka agad. Yun. Ang nawawala ay yung initial temperature. So, ganun ulit po ang gagawin natin pag nag-convert po tayo ng formula. So, ang nawawala si T1, tatakpan natin yon, Then, cross multiply and this will be the calculation. So, V1 times T2 divided by V2. So, T1 is equals to 2.3 liters times 77 Kelvin divided by 0 0.642 liters. So, cancel natin si, actually si liters, nakakancel po dyan na Both liters, then the answer will be 276 Kelvin. Ano po? Yan. Does the result make sense? Of course, when the volume increases the temperature increases. The result agrees with the both the kinetic theory and What is kinetic molecular theory? Mm -hmm. Dito po pasok yung sa mga gas law. So, we have in this uh, kinetic molecular theory, the gases are composed of molecules. Alam po natin yan from elementary pa lang. Ano po? Uh, the distance from one molecule to another molecule are far greater than the molecule's dimension. These molecules can be considered as spherical bodies which possess negligible mass and volume. In letter B, the gas are always in constant random motion and they frequently collide with one another and with the walls of the container. So, collision among molecules are perfectly elastic. That is, energy may transfer from molecule to molecule as the result of collision, but the total energy of the molecules in the system remains the same or in constant. Letter C, there is neither attractive nor repulsive force between or among gas molecules, and the movement of gas molecules is affected by temperature. The average kinetic of the molecules is directly related to the temperature of gas. So, we have biomolecules. Yan. When we say biomolecules, a biomolecule or a biological molecule is a loosely used term for the molecules present in the organisms that are essential. Kapag narinig natin yung word, word na essential, ano po mapasok sa isip? Yung lugaw po, ma'am. Ano po? Ibig sabihin, pag sinabi natin essential, is kailangan. So, usually, biomolecules, kailangan natin yan dahil ito po ay na provide ng mga may buhay. Biomolecules are provided ng mga may buhay. Ano po? So, yan po ang ating biomolecules. So, we have for the carbohydrates, the lipids, the proteins, and nucleic acid. I know familiar kayo dyan kasi in your TLE, nadidiscuss na rin po yung iba dyan. Ano po? So, we have the components and function of these biomolecules. In carbohydrates, of course, alam natin that it is a large sequence of monosaccharides such as nandyan po under ni carbohydrates si glucose, si fructose, si galactose wherein makikita natin yan sa mga kinakain natin. 
And the function of these carbohydrates, of course, alam na alam nyo yan, main source of energy, it is also stored in plants as starch and in animals as glycogen. So, meron po siya ang carbohydrates, meron po sa plants, uh, it is considered as the starch and sa animals naman, it is considered as glycogen found in the liver. And it is also presenting in the structure of the cell walls in plants. Next, in lipids, we have lipids is consist of triglycerides containing glycerol and three fatty acids binding together. So, as you notice, fatty acids, so meaning to say, more on fats. So, meron tayong good fats and bad fats wherein need po talaga ng body natin. Ano po? So, sabi nga, hindi lahat ng fats, uh, rather, hindi lahat ng fats ay masama. Yung iba doon, kailangan po ng katawan natin. So, function of this is presenting in the structure of cellular membranes. We also have source of energy to the body to keeping it warm. Or, it serve as heat isolation. And, of course, it is stored as lipid layers underneath the skin of many animals to adapt their environment. Next, we have proteins. Proteins consist of polypeptide micromolecules building up to subunits called amino acid. So, kung mapapansin ninyo, uh, parang na-discuss na, na, discuss na natin to in third quarter. Amino acid, wherein under siya ng protein, wherein kailangan po siya para po sa pag-build ng DNA. Ano po? Without this protein, hindi magkakaroon or hindi magpa-function si DNA. So, it is binding together by peptide bonds. So, we have building the body and increased growth process. Yan po yung function ni protein. Aside from that, it is also presenting in the structure of hairs, nails, and horns. And, of course, forming enzymes for performing the metabolic reactions inside the cell. Another is nucleic acid. Narinig na natin yan sa DNA and RNA. Ano po? Yan, subunits po ng nucleic acid is nucleotides. Siyempre, function po niya is to the synthesis in the cell. And of course, it carries the genetic information of the whole body. We also have chemical reaction. Of course, it is a process by which one of more substances we have the reactants. It is converted to one or more different substances which is the product a chemical reaction it rearranges the constituent atoms of the reactants to create different substances as products it must be distinguished for physical changes wherein sa physical changes we have the melting evaporation, yan yung nasa water cycle, that is physical change. And we have chemical change, wherein chemical change, identity will remain the same, but no matter what is the physical state, like water is the same compound with the, each molecule composed of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. However, Yan, sa sample na po. Papasok sa isip nyo yan. Siyempre, sasabihin nyo, may pagsabog, nag-iiba yung color. Yan. Another, we have a theory. We're in the collision theory. Collision theory is the reactions can only happen when the reactant particle collide, but most collisions are not successful in forming product molecules despite the high rate of collisions. So, reactants should have sufficient energy, of course, and their molecules should be in proper orientation for successful collision to happen. So, in collision theory, ayan naman po is dalawang reactant ang pagsasamahin nyo para makabuo ng panibagong product. Pero sabi nga, in, dito sa collision theory, um, kailangan po is that sufficient or enough yung energy ninyo para maging successful o magkaroon ng successful collision. So, with the minimum kinetic energy required for reaction, we have the activation energy. 
And we have this, the law of conservation of mass from Anton Labusha, wherein he discovered that mass is neither created nor destroyed in chemical reaction. In other words, the mass is of any one element at the beginning of the reaction will equal to the mass of the element at the end of the reaction. Ibig sabihin, wala pong mawawala, walang masisira in chemical reaction. That is the Another, we have the factors affecting chemical reactions. So, we have nature and sizes of the reactants. Ayan. Nature and sizes. So, kailangan po sakto. Hindi po basta-basta na what do you call this? Basta-basta lang tayo mag uh, mag-provide ng, ng magiging reactants natin. Ano po? Uh, you have your last or learner's answer sheet. Nandyan din po yan. Kindly read na lang po. Ano? We also have concentration of the reactants. Yan, kailangan po observe natin at kailangan proportional ang concentration ng ating reactants. The presence of catalyst. Ano po ba si catalyst? Pag sinabing catalyst, these are the substances that alter or change the rate of chemical reaction without being consumed. It simply means that catalyst is part of the reaction, but after the reaction, it has been completed. They can be recovered and used again. So, that is catalyst. So, we have positive catalyst and we have negative catalyst. Thank you for listening. So, if you have question, kindly message me on our group or kindly PM me in my messenger. Thank you and God bless.